Ask Me Decor. Today we're in the dining room. We are going to talk about my collection of ironstone. All these beautiful pieces in front of me are ironstone. joining me today and if you're new here welcome please hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe button it really helps so ironstone is a porous earthenware there's no iron in it at all it was first made in England basically made for settlers eventually caught on to the American farmer people who didn't really have a lot of money they were buying this the reason was because it is very thick and heavy and durable. Storing everything within. Oh, dreamy, breezy, we go. Easy, easy on our tiptoes. Undercover agents of the other. Most ironstone has a maker's mark so on the bottom of the ironstone i will show you right here you can see a mark there that tells you where it was made who made it and by the mark you can usually research and find out what um, time period it was made in How did I get started collecting ironstone? Well, this was my very first piece. I got this piece about 20 years ago. We were at a baseball tournament in a town west of here, and there was a lull in the games. There was nothing going on. So my niece and I decided we saw an antique store down the road and we were like, let's go check it out. And at the time I was decorating my bedroom in a black and white toile fabric. And I wanted it just a white plate to put in between these black and white twall plates that I had collected that matched the bedding perfectly. So we walked through this antique store. I found this, I thought it's white. It's a pretty good size. I'm taking it. I think I paid about $4 for it. Mind you, that was 20 years ago. So I used it in my bedroom since then redecorated the bedroom like two more times. And then let's jump to present day. I started collecting ironstone and I thought, I have that white plate. Let me look at it. And I looked on the back of it and there is a mark on it and it is an England mark and it says vitreous porcelain on it. So what does that mean? So I looked that up, researched that, and here vitreous porcelain is another way to say ironstone. So from there, my collection grew. I started to find it in places like flea markets, antique stores, thrift stores. I found some in the Salvation Army. So I just started growing my collection. Now, why do I want to collect this? I love that it's white. It goes with everything. I can match it up with every single holiday and every single event that's going on in this house. history. It was so meaningful to the American farmer. It was collected by women who didn't have a lot and they wanted to have nice things and they needed durable things because they had large families and they cooked and fed people constantly. I love the history of it. Third reason I love it is because I can mix and match it. I don't have to have all the same pattern. 
Um, it's white, some of it is cream color, but I can gather all these different pieces from all these different places. I can set a table with it. I can use it for a family event, an, a cookout, whatever I want to a holiday, and it all looks great together. So how do you care for it? Very simple. You can't put it in a dishwasher. You have to hand wash these pieces with dish soap. And if you do that, they'll last another hundred years. There are some pieces that you will see. I want you to see this cake plate that I have. There is some staining on there and some grazing. I don't know if you can see the grazing. That's like all those little cracks in the finish. Grazing to me is a good thing. It's something that gives the pieces character. I love that. If I see a grazed, very grazed piece, I'm all for it. Now this piece has that dark spot in it. What you can try to do with that is you can use peroxide to try to get that out. You can use denture, denture cleaner or toothpaste to try to get it out or, you know, use your mild detergent and see what happens. Most of the stains you won't get out. And I'm okay with that because this, these pieces are, some of these are over a hundred years old. I'm okay that they have a couple spots, you know, they're still useful and beautiful. Now I hope you stick around till the end of the video because we're going to take a walk through my garden. All of the flowers are blooming right now. It looks amazing. We're going to pick some flowers. We're going to bring them in and we are going to do a floral arrangement with fresh flowers from my garden in one of these pieces of ironstone. So if you're interested, stick around. You're not going to want to miss that. perennial garden. So we've got purple cone flowers and we have a couple white ones in there and there's a couple yellow ones kind of getting hidden back there but in the front here we have some Russian sage. Like I said everything is blooming it looks so great and we head over to here and this is our bee balm. The hummingbirds love this. They feast on it. Then right here we have some brown-eyed Susans and then we have some lamb's ear. My lamb's ear is kind of looking a little sickly right now. It uh, doesn't do well when the rain hits it. So over here is Autumn Joyna. That'll be blooming in the fall and that will be gorgeous, but we have to wait a little bit for that. There's a hosta going to bloom. Then we've got some Rose of Sharon. And we have some crocus mia. This crocus mia is really beautiful. And the hummingbirds love this too. They feast on this too. Then we have some red hot pokers coming up here. More black eyed Susan. You can see more purple cone flowers in the background there. And here's our grist mill. And then here is some wild geranium. And that grows so good. It's always so big. <laughs> Can't even get the lawnmower all the way to the edge of the grass because it grows so big. But in here we have some lupine and they are doing beautiful. And lots more coneflowers. You can tell I love them. There's some lambs there that's doing really great. And if we come around this way, we've got more of the brown-eyed Susan. So let's grab some of these flowers and take them in the house. So this is the piece we're going to use. I filled it with water already and now we're going to make a grid on the top with this masking tape. Okay, we have a nice grid on the top. Let's go get our flowers. All right, so these are all from my garden. So let's get started. This is going to look awesome.